Welcome back to Typewriter Minutes. This is Sam. In the 1990 thriller Misery, based on the Stephen King novel, the psychopath Annie Wilkes holds her favorite author, Paul Sheldon, captive and forces him to write a new novel based on the fictional character Misery Chastain. Annie makes Paul write the novel with a Royal Ten typewriter. Paul finishes the novel despite being brutalized by Annie. To celebrate the finished novel, Paul asks Annie for a single cigarette and a glass of champagne. Using the match Annie gives him, Paul sets the manuscript on fire, and as Annie rushes to save it, Paul hits Annie over the head with the Royal Tin typewriter. The fight continues, and, well, you'll just have to watch the movie to see what happens. Today we're doing a review of a 1931 Royal Tin. We knew after watching the movie the typewriter could be used as a weapon, but we didn't know that there were other dangers lurking inside. We picked up this royal a few weeks ago. I saw an ad at a local museum that was having an, their annual vintage sale. And I picked up an Oliver 3, an Underwood 5, and this Royal 10. Uh, I got pretty good prices on them. And it's not in perfect cosmetic condition. It's got some scratches along the front and paint chips. Uh, but overall, it's in pretty good shape. The decals are in good shape front and on the back the paper table. Kind of a cool design there. I love the looks of it. Uh, let's get back in focus here. There we go. Uh, a lot of the Royal Tins that I've seen have clear glass on the side. This one has black glass and I think after asking some questions on an online typewriter form that it came out of the factory that way. Uh, it's kind of cool looking. There's a few paint chips down on this side. Back looks really nice. A few little chips here and there. This side looks good. Overall, it's in really good condition. Uh, there was a little bit of surface rust on the return arm which I got off and one of these little doodads here, I forget which one, uh, I got that off. Otherwise there was no rust taking hold anywhere in the machine. I did clean it up, uh, put some wax on it and it's shining nicely. And again, other than a few little scuffs here and there, overall it's still a really nice cosmetic condition. Let's take a look at the keyboard. These have a chrome edge to them. It's kind of nice, gives it a nice classy look. The standard QWERTY keyboard, which we've seen a lot. And where's the one and exclamation mark? There is not a one and exclamation mark key. All right, so if you want to do a one, you have to use the- a lowercase L. And then how do you do an exclamation mark? First, you're going to have to do an apostrophe. Backspace, and backspace, and then period. All right. This is the first, I believe, the first year that the Royal Ten had a basket shift. Before that, they were carriage shifted and kind of heavy on the pinkies. This one is actually nice and light for this big, big machine. Uh, one thing we noticed on the ribbon color selector, you have red over here, black, and stencils over here. It won't let you go to stencil unless you simultaneously push this uh, kind of safety lever. I have no idea why they would make you push a safety lever to give it, uh, to get into the stencil mode. Let's try it and uh, see what happens. All right, well, I guess we know why they have the safety latch on the ribbon color selector, so be careful. We'll come back to these levers in a few minutes. There's some interesting details up here. Um, there's a little doodad here, and there's one here, and if you flip them up, then you can put an index card in, and it holds the index card flush to the platen, and then when you're done, you just doink, doink, they come back down. Kind of neat. 
there's numbering over here and over here. This, I don't know, somebody must have tried to clean that way back when because it's a little blurry. But anyway, um, you'll notice when we move the carriage back and forth, there's a little pointer that points to where you are. Like if we're on 70 here, that means you're typing at 70. And if you're on 30, there's a pointy doodad on this side also shows that you're typing positions at the 30. So that's kind of nifty. Uh, there's some neat little details up here where the ribbon spools go. If you open these, there's a nice little chrome ball that you open that with and then you can lift out the ribbon spools. You have to be careful with these though because um, we found some things lurking inside the machine and you never know if it's on the right or the left one. We'll, uh, we'll try the left here. Sorry about that. That was Fred. We discovered him the third day after we bought the machine. He gets a little cranky when he doesn't eat. All right, back to the spools. Most uh, typewriters that we have, the ribbon feeds this way over the top and out. This one, this royal actually feeds out this way through the bottom of this little spool cover, goes up through that fork and then into the ribbon vibrator. You do not have to have eyelets on this. It has an automatic ribbon reversal system. You do not need the eyelets. Okay, uh, let's see what we have here. We have a industrial strength paper bale. The rollers, paper bale rollers are in good shape. I don't know what they're made of. I don't know if it's rubber or wood. It's kind of hard to tell, but they're in really good shape. There's kind of a neat little lever right here. You pull this lever. I guess if you're too lazy to hold the paper bale up by yourself, this thing has a little wheel, little wheel right there that rolls along that edge. And that is just kind of a neat detail. Up, and it holds the paper bale up. All right, put that back down. Here's the carriage release lever. So there's one on this side. And there's another one right here. Oop. Sorry, I need my cameraman. There's the other carriage release lever right there. So one on each side. I'm gonna pass off the camera. All right, we had a video problem, but we're back now. Up here, if you'll zoom in, Mr. Cameraman, we have a paper release lever. So it's, it's huge, about the biggest paper release lever I've ever seen. If you get your paper in, crooked, just lift that guy up and straighten it. Or when you're done typing, don't yank the paper out. Lift this up and then pull the paper out. Uh, while I'm thinking about it, it has uh, the platen. There's no pits or anything, but it is pretty hard given the age of the machine. These little rollers down here are in good shape. That one's in good shape. This one over here has some cracks, but it's still holding and the paper's feeding just fine, so I'm not gonna replace that. I'm gonna leave well enough alone. And then we'll pass the camera back off to my colleague here so I can get the back of the machine. Okay, we have manual tab stops. You just pull them out, place them wherever you want. I don't know how many they came with out of the factory, but we have three tab stops left. And then we also have uh, left and right margins. You just push, again, they like these little chrome balls back in the day. Push the chrome ball, push and slide. Same over here, push and slide. And then if you come up top, there's kind of a neat little detail with the spin the machine around. Uh, the paper table flips up like this. And you'll see back here, there's a little 
stop point oh, with a pointer and then it has a little arrow on it that shows where your margins are going to hit so the right margin you'll see this screw right there is going to come in contact with that stop and that when it stops wherever that guy is pointing that's where your right margin is set same thing on the left side this little screw right there is going to come in make contact with that stop and wherever that guy right there is pointing that's where your left margin stop is all right while we're in the back we'll show you the bell it's got this huge bell uh, right here here's the little hammer and you can see the action on it there's a little whoop, sorry there's the trigger for the bell I need to be able to see it on a, on a lot of machines the bell let's get in focus the bells hidden so it's kind of nice kind of neat to be able to see how it works without taking the machine apart doesn't want to focus there we go okay that's enough of the bell back over to this side has a sliding paper scale over here so you can set where the left side of your paper is going to be and then we'll show you some of these other features here okay a few more features on the left side of the machine there's a variable line space button here and then there's a lever here that do something similar i'll show you if i put in the paper type some letters and you'll see that this lines up when you're typing with the bottom of this card guide see how the J's lined up there if I push this lever pull it out it releases the clicks so you can type wherever you want on the page and then when you flip it back always it goes back and remembers exactly where you were so if you'll zoom in you see that the J's again are lined up there we go with the card guide the variable line spacer on the other hand if you push it it also releases the clicks but there's no guarantee that your letters are going to be lined up with that card guide again so you see how it's off just a little bit so that's the difference between the variable line spacer and this one. There's another danger though, if you keep pushing the variable line spacing button too often, you'll see what happens. All right, so be careful with that variable line spacer. A couple more features. Again, another little chrome ball, and you'll see that sets the line spacing. If you come down here, cameraman, you can see there's a one, two, and three. So that's one, one, two, and three. And I guess the final features before we do the type test are these two knobs here. This one here, as I mentioned, there's the automatic ribbon reverse. This one here just is a manual ribbon reverse. So flip it back and forth so the spools start winding in a different direction. This one here, it's kind of a dual purpose button. If you'll grab the camera, uh, as I hold this down, you'll see it frees up the ribbon spools. So you can wind the ribbon spools. If I let go, it won't wind. Hold it down and you can wind either direction. So come up here, you can see you can wind this one or this one and again the danger we've noticed though is that if you hold that button down too long it can cause some problems so be careful with the ribbon release lever 
Okay, I'm gonna tip up the machine and show you the bottom before we do the type test. Oh, this thing weighs a ton. You'll see on the bottom, it's got uh, four nice feet. The feet are actually still rubbery. And then there's a plate. There's a screw inside each foot. If you take those screws out, this bottom plate comes off. And I'll show you one of the things. Oh, that sucker's heavy. Uh, underneath that plate, you'll see there's a little knob, number 37 in that diagram. You can adjust that knob and that adjusts the key action for either harder or lighter typing action. Now time for a type test. All right. One of the things I love about the standards is that they're, they're a real pleasure to type on and they, they're just so heavy duty. I mean, even the line return lever when you return it, this thing is just feels indestructible. Uh, and the typing action is really light. It's just a real nice typewriter to work on. Something I didn't appreciate before I had a Royal 10 was this open space here. And as you're typing, you can watch the type bars come up and bounce and you watch the ribbon slowly advancing. A lot of that is hidden in some of the other standard models. And it's, it's kind of a mesmerizing experience to type on one of these when you see what's going on as you type. All right, first. On the black setting. The reason I typed that twice is that the typeface on this is really small. It's uh, 12 or 13 characters per inch. If you'll zoom in, you'll see the imprint is really nice, but it, for such a big machine, it has kind of a really teeny tiny typeface. So I'll do a couple lines of each uh, on black and red. In the red setting. If we can do this, um, we're going to cut out and we'll be right back. All right, we're going to get a view from the front so you can see the lovely tight bars dancing as we type. There's the line lock, and I love the fact that the margin release button is right there. Nothing happened. No monsters. Oops. So again, I just love having this open view of the type bars and the spools. It does make it a little bit louder as you're typing, but I didn't appreciate that before I had the Royal 10. And let's take a look at the type imprint. Looks really good. I don't think I did an alignment test, but... Looks pretty good. We'll wrap up this review with some pros and cons of this 1931 Royal Tin. Some pros include its classic looks, chrome trimmed keys, the decals are in good shape, there's nice typing action, it's a basket shift machine, overall in good cosme cosmetic condition, mesmerizing typing experience, it can be used as a weapon against tormentors, given the weight, and there's a cool margin release button. The mesmerizing typing experience, that just means you kind of get to see what's going on in there. Kind of cool. As far as cons, uh, scuffs and paint chips, mainly on the front frame, I mean, compared to the vast majority of Royal Tens that I've seen, it's in a lot better shape. Very little rust. No rust now that I've taken it off the few places that I found it. 
uh, but overall in good shape, but still some scuffs. Uh, hopefully the wax that I put on will keep that from further coming off. Uh, it's a little bit loud because it's so open in the front. It's a little bit of a loud typer. It doesn't bother me, but it might bother some of you. Only three tab stops left on the back side of the machine. I think it probably came with more out of the factory. You could probably pick some of those up off parts machines or whatnot. And then finally, you kind of need to be aware of the avalanches, aliens, spiders, and robots. That's something that we did not expect when we picked up this Royal Tin. This is Ailey. Thanks for joining us. And make sure to share, link, like, and subscribe.